Okay, so when we create our manufacturing document, we're actually gonna create a new document for that as well. We could create toolpaths inside of this same document, but it's a good practice to separate the two documents from each other so that you can isolate your design and have a, have a full recipe of how it's designed. It might even be a different person that's doing the design uh, and then start creating our toolpaths because we're gonna add additional geometry uh, just for the purpose of, of manufacturing the document. So uh, at the same time, I'm also gonna show you how to do an assembly that's often done in design as well as manufacturing. And, and to do that, we're gonna start off by inserting this current uh, component into a, a new design. We'll do that using a derive command. And I'm gonna get to the derive command by hitting S on my keyboard to open up the shortcut menu and then searching for derive. Derive lets me say, I want to take um, this document that I've already got and send it into a new document uh, as, a, uh, as a new design. So we're gonna go ahead and take this and send it off into a new document uh, where I can start some, some modeling on it here. Okay, so it's in, it's in my new document. I'm gonna go ahead and just save this uh, document and we'll just call this the video MFG uh, for manufacturing. I could again just start making toolpaths, but I told you I wanted to show you how to create an assembly. We're gonna draw some stock. We're gonna create some initial geometry uh, for this as well. Um, and the way I want to make this part is, is to hold it standing up in a vise like this um, so I can contour around the outside of it. We're going to uh, put this uh, in with a slitting saw. And since I have a slitting saw in the machine anyway, we're just gonna use a slitting saw to chop it off and, and break it out of the machine. And, and this will be a bit of a one and done setup that, uh, that usually works pretty well. So um, first step first, uh, drawing this the stock. We're back to um, the same kinds of commands. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and draw on this bottom plane. I wanna do a center rectangle of my stock. Uh, so I'll just go ahead and draw the stock. I'll make it one inch by two inches. That's the block of material I'm gonna make it out of and hit enter. Uh, but I didn't find a good way to center it. I've got the right size stock and it looks right, um, but it's not centered on that block. I'm gonna show you a neat little trick. See these orange lines? They're called uh, construction lines and we can create our own for reference. I'm gonna use a line command and just go kitty corner through our current part and make that construction. And then I'll just drag the center of this onto the center of that and we've automatically made a reference that centers this sketch on top of the other sketch. Be very useful for us. We can go ahead and extrude this. Um, so we will add some stock to the bottom. That's what we're gonna hold on to in the vise. And I'll create this as a two directional extrude so there can be some stock on the top. Now I don't wanna be cutting this, I'm trying to create a geometry that my part fits inside of. Um, so we are going to say this is actually going to be uh, a new component and this new component will be our stock. So here we've got now two components, could hide this one, um, two components and we'll go ahead and just call this stock. Uh, for people coming from other CAM systems, you don't have to model the stock. I will automatically do it in CAM as well, but there's some benefits to it, including uh, adding a adding a vise like, uh, like what we're gonna do. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and just make sure this stock is rigidly associated with my assembly so it can't uh, move around. Oop, I did that with the wrong uh, mate. We're gonna get into this again in a minute. Um, so we've got our stock in here, we've got our part in here. Uh, we're now gonna create an assembly with a vise that's gonna attach to this stock. So to do that, I'll just drag this um, vise in from my data panel. And that's gonna let us kind of drop it wherever we want. We can slide it down, we can uh, rotate it around. It doesn't really matter uh, where this initial position is though, because we'll, we'll get that fully set later. So the vise is in the assembly now, but it, it can kind of float around anywhere. We, what we want to do now is rigidly attach it with the, um, the jaws digging into our part. What we're gonna, we're gonna do that, we're gonna join them together using what we call joints. Um, so when we're, when we're creating a joint, 
we'll select uh, the two points that we want connected with each other. And I want the point at the end of uh, this line to be connected to the point at um, the end of this line here. And that should uh, attach those two things together in a rigid way. So it's, it's attached it on there. I might then just say, but I want it, oops, not an offset in that direction. Let's zero that offset out. I want to drag it and center that part uh, in the vise like so. Okay, so now we get to set the opening of our, our vise and move on to the manufacturing. We've got our part in the vise, and, and when we're in manufacturing, we use what we call uh, setups. Setups define uh, how we're going to set up the part on the machine. Uh, and this is when we're starting to actually create the instructions for the CNC machine. So I'll go ahead and click Setup. Uh, within the setup, it's asking us a couple questions. The first question is, what machine am I going to run it on? We'll go ahead and hit Select for the machine. Um, from here, we can see we have a library of machines that uh, are currently stored in the cloud and we'll download them or we'll access them for our local usage. Uh, I wanted to show you how to program this on a UMC 750 or sorry, a UMC 500. So we'll go ahead and search for a UMC 500. We're going to say we want to use that machine. Um, this is the first time I'm using it. So we're going to download it uh, and we're going to save this machine to our current library. Uh, that's not something you need to do regularly. That's just something you're going to do the first time, get this machine accessed into the into the library and get that saved so that we can then use it all the time. You're, you're usually only going to do that once because you don't you don't buy machines uh, quite often unless you're a real productive shop. But uh, I don't need to have the automatic connection. That's a, a way we can actually stream data and measurement data off of the machine. But we're not going to do that for this uh, particular setup. So we're getting this machine saved. Again, this is a one-time deal, but I thought I'd walk through the whole process with you. Uh, the machine is set. Uh, the next thing we want to say is, what is the model that we're machining? Because there's a whole bunch of different pieces of geometry. Some of this is fixture. Some of this is our part. I'm going to expand out my tree to see all these things and say, that is the component I'm machining. We want to set up where zero is on our actual CNC machine. Uh, maybe I'll just hide the stock for a minute to be able to see that. And we want to set up which direction uh, the Z is going to come from. Uh, so what we do for setting the origin, we'll set the origin by saying, I, I just want to pick a plane. I'll pick this plane because the Z points up at the cutter, up at the spindle of the machine. For its location, I'm going to select uh, a point, And I like to actually put my... Uh, datum at the center of rotation on the machine. That way I can leave this vise in the machine and do many different parts in the same setup. So my, my datum, the zero uh, on the machine is going to be down there at the bottom. And this is how we sort of correlate the digital world with the physical world. Uh, we want to set what of these geometries are fixtures so that uh, we can see if we crashed into them. Uh, so I can pick this whole vise assembly and say that's my fixture. And we want to go to the stock tab and say, how do I want to define the stock? In this case, I modeled it. So I'll say from solid and I'll pick my stock geometry. Uh, the last part we're going to do is uh, position the, the part on our machine. Just verify that it's sitting in the right spot. And it is. So now we've got our part sitting inside of our machine. We're ready to start creating tool paths. So we can view the machine uh, or not view the machine. It's a little easier to not view the machine when we uh, when we're going about creating toolpaths. Usually the first toolpath we do is uh, a toolpath that we call a facing operation. And that's going to bring the top of the stock down. So I'll just go ahead and click face. Uh, from here we can say select uh, to find a tool. Uh, I'm going to look for facing mills. And I can just go ahead and look in my sample folder. And there's a nice face mill right here. Uh, we'll select it. And uh, I'm going to go through the parameters later uh, for the facing operation. We just say, OK, and now we get this pretty little blue line that cuts across. We can already see our stocks updated to show you what the stock is going to look like. And if we want to uh, simulate this in the machine, we can. Uh, and we're going to actually see what this machine is going to do uh, 
uh, to cut that first part. So we're starting to create toolpaths for our machine already. The next thing we want to do is contour around this part and cut it down to size uh, around the outside. So I'll pick a 2D contour in this case. We can't use this tool. This isn't the appropriate tool for this. Uh, so I'll select a different tool. We usually use what we call flat end mills to contour around the outside of a part. I'm going to look in my same uh, samples folder there and grab a, a half inch flat end mill with some um, cutting parameters for roughing out aluminum. Now I already know this tool is too short, but uh, I'm going to walk you through the steps uh, for how to find that out. So we, we picked the tool in the facing tool path it automatically got uh, the geometry because it just knows you got to machine the stock until it gets to the top of the part. With a contouring tool path, we need to tell it what we want to contour. Uh, so we're going to move on to the next tab in this parameter dialog and say, I want to contour around the outside of the part. And again, I'll just say OK to see what's going on. It's created a tool path. Um, we already know something funny is going on here because the cutting portion of the tool is, is down too low. And if I run a simulation, uh, you'll quickly see that I'm going to crash into the uh, into the part. So we're, sh we're showing that there's a collision here uh, and the tool is clearly too short. I, I purposely did that because I wanted to, to show you uh, what's going on. Also, we're cutting just to the bottom of the part. When I cut this off, I actually want to be machined a little lower so I can uh, slice it off with my slitting saw at the end. So we're going to start to make a couple more changes on this. I'll just go ahead and edit that toolpath. Um, geometry is still the same. The heights is the first thing I wanted to change. Right now we're machining just down to the depth of the contour I selected. In this case, I actually want to say I want to go to the bottom of the model, but I want to go past the bottom of the model uh, by, uh, let's go a quarter of an inch, but well, a quarter of an inch is probably a little high. I'm going to use a 30 second uh, slitting saw. So we'll go past by an eighth of an inch. I also need to take uh, some depth cuts because the I didn't have enough flute length. So I can go to the passes tab here. This is going to control all the parameters that make this tool path a, a tool path. And we're going to say, let's go in half inch step downs. And I think the most important thing is I actually need to change that tool. So we'll go to the tool tab. I'm going to select my tool. Instead of selecting a new one, I'm actually just going to modify this tool. So I'll edit it. Um, come to the cutter tab. I know I'm bouncing around a lot, but hopefully I'm starting to show some of the flow of data. And we're going to say this tool, uh, I actually need it sticking out of the holder more than it is. Right now we're just sticking it out an inch and it's a three inch tool. Let's stick it out two inches and that should give us uh, more than enough space uh, to, to make this make this part successfully. So I've uh, brought the tool out of my holder a little farther. I added some depth cuts. I'm machining past the part a little bit. Uh, and we've got a new tool path that's now coming down and, and not colliding.